Hello everybody. Today we'll be starting with a new chapter, chapter number 5, understanding elementary shapes. Now here what we'll be including in the chapter are the highlights here. That first we'll go with the introduction, then measuring line segments, right and the straight angles, then acute, obtuse and the reflex angles. Then also we'll do the measuring angles, perpendicular lines, we'll do classification of triangles, we'll do quadrilaterals and we'll include polygons in the following chapter. Now here to begin with measuring the line segments. Now here all the shapes we see around us are formed using the curves or the lines. For example you see the table, the chair, the room in which you are sitting, many things in general the fan blades they all are made up either from the line segment or from some curve. See if there is a birthday party at your home then you do various arrangements for that right. So here you can see in this show, you can see a line segment, these triangle cuttings, they have some line segments like this and this. Yes, they are the line segments. Again, you have, if a glass is kept here, you see, again, it's made from some line and a curve. The top of this, which is a circular shape or an oval in shape, that is formed from a curve here as well. So, these are various shapes which we use in our day-to-day -day life and there are many other shapes which are formed with the combination of these shapes right so but the important thing here is the word line segments you all are familiar with a ray a line and a line segment so here what is a line segment you know that it's a part of a line right for example if I draw a line segment it's a part from a line that means it has two end points A and B they are the fixed point and how to measure this line segment? There are different ways in which we can measure one line segment. For example, a line is a fixed portion of a line, first of all, right? You need to know, you all, it's already, uh, you are familiar with it, that a line segment is a fixed portion of a line. Then, this make it possible to measure a line segment. Since it is finite, okay, then only you can measure. If it's an infinite, like the length of a line, you cannot measure the length of a line. You can only measure the length of a line segment because it is fixed or it is finite. Also, this measure of each line segment is a unique number called its length. Every line segment, whatever you draw, will be having a certain line here. That is certain length here, right? And that can be measured because it is finite. Now, how a line segment can be further used to form various polygons? So, let's see. With the combination of three line segments, we can get a triangle and a triangle is made up of three line segments. In the same way, we can make a four-sided figure, a closed four-sided figure, which is a quadrilateral. So, a quadrilateral is made up of four line segments here. Now, comparison of various line segments. How can we compare various line segments? You know, there can be various measures. Like first, you can say, we can just simply see, we can look at the line segments, that is merely by observation. So, if any two line segments are given to you, like if I give you AB and CD or AB and PQ, now how can you compare them? Just by observing and you can say that AB and CD are equal in length or you might say they look equal in length, right? We cannot be so sure by the time we measure it. But yes, by observing, we can say, given rough idea, given approximate idea, that they are equal in length. Similarly, I can say AB and PQ might be equal in length or might not be equal in length. I will say that AB is greater than PB. Just by observing, it seems that AB will be greater than PB or AB is greater than BQ. But I am not sure about AB and PQ. They may be equal, they may not be equal. So, here we can compare by merely observation. Like, and the above figure, AB and PQ, they have the same lengths. So, here AB and PQ, you see they have the same length. And this is not quite obvious. Similarly, AB and CD, they are equal in length. By observation, we can conclude this thing. Is there any other way in which we can measure or we can compare various line segments? So, yes, the second method to compare is by tracing. You generally use it to draw various shapes 
anything or if you want to draw a cartoon character and you are not good at drawing what do you do you use a tracing paper you put that tracing paper on that particular picture you draw that you trace that and then you redraw the same shape or the same cartoon character and you say that yes i have done it right it's the same thing here you use a tracing paper keep it over the line segment which is given to you like if you want to draw a line segment which is equal in length to the given line segment ab then we put a tracing paper over ab we draw the line on the tracing paper and again we cut that part and we redraw the line which is equal in length to ab right so this will be the second method which we rarely use to draw the line segment but we use to draw the exact curve shape from this fine next is there any other way out to compare ab and cd we use a tracing paper as we have done like trace cd and place the traced segment on ab so you try this on your own right now any other way out yes very simple very common that we generally use that is comparing using the ruler and a divider a ruler means a scale that you generally use in the geometry kit so using a ruler and a divider do you use a divider to make a line segment yes you may use it it you can use it as well right it depends on what condition you are using but it can help you out to compare two line segments see how you can do that <coughs> if there is a ruler given to you and if you need to draw a line segment which is equal in length to a particular line segment then you use a divider for this or you may use a ruler both of them are appropriate to use for this particular thing now here you can compare or you can draw various line segments of equal in length using a divider and a ruler like if i use a ruler and i draw a line segment of 5 cm from this what i can do same i want to compare using a divider then what i'll do i'll keep the divider one needle here at the point 0 and one at the point 5 then i'll get the equal line segment to 5 cm similarly we can compare various other line segments now here let's see this ruler is divided into 15 equal parts right so how can we use it each of these 15 part is of length 1 cm you can see from here each part is of 1 cm and divided into 15 equal parts and now each centimeter is further divided see what is centimeter this part is a centimeter right if i write from 0 to 1 so this is a centimeter and it is further divided into 10 small parts and each small part is called as a millimeter you are familiar with this also so each centimeter or the each sub part of the division of a centimeter is 1 millimeter right and accordingly we can draw any line of any measurement that is very common that we generally use right now next how to draw using some certain millimeter or something let's zoom it out and see if i want to draw like where is 1 millimeter where is 2 millimeter so here i can say the number next to 0 the first division from 0 gives you 1 millimeter the second division because 0 to 1 is divided into 10 equal parts and this is the first part of it so it will represent 1 mm similarly the second one will represent 2 mm the third one will represent 3 mm so if i want to proceed on the same ruler i'll find out that after 2 if i want to see so 2.1 0.2 and 0.3 so this will represent 2.3 now centimeter here the unit changes to centimeter you know this because this is 1 cm 1 cm this will be 2 cm then we are adding 0.3 and 0.3 is what 3 is the millimeter but 0.3 will be centimeter so we have 2.3 cm here now 1 mm is 0.1 cm how do we conclude this part that 1 mm is 0.1 cm so let's see for this here we see that 1 mm now there in 1 cm there are 10 divisions okay so we are dividing 1 cm into 10 equal parts and each part will then be 1 upon 10 and now you can convert 1 upon 10 to decimal so what you will get you will get 0.1 
and hence you can say that this one part comes out to be 0 0.1 but the unit now will be centimeter. So, you can say that 1 millimeter will be equal to 0 0.1 centimeter, right? I hope it is clear to everyone. <coughs> now, let us move on to the next segment which makes it furthermore conclusions will be like 2 millimeter will be 0 0.2 centimeter and you can continue it and so on. Also, 2.3 centimeter you can conclude here that it is 2 centimeter and then 3 millimeter. So, 3 millimeter means it becomes 0 0.3 centimeter. So, 2.3 centimeter means 2 centimeter and 3 millimeter or 2 centimeter and 0.3 centimeter that gives you 2.3. The next one. Now, let us see again by a ruler. It is not compulsory that all the ruler measures 15 centimeter. Okay. Some of the ruler may measure 20. If you are using a big scale, it may use a bit bigger than it. Okay. Now, how to draw a line segment of 5.8? For that, what we do? We take 5 centimeter and after that, we take 8 millimeters. So, you will get the number 5.8 centimeter and you can easily draw that line segment as well. Now, can we draw using a divider as well? Yes, because using a ruler and a divider, both we can construct a line segment of equal measure. For that, what you will do? You will take a divider and you will place the needle, one needle over the point 0 and the second needle at the point 5.8. And now, making equal to 5.8, you, what, you, what are you going to draw here is, let us see, you will simply keep the divider and join the needle to needle and here you will get a line segment AB which is of the same length as the previous line segment which is given to you and you will be using this in your higher grades as well. Now, the next topic that we will start is angles and it is a very interesting chapter topic which we generally again use in our daily life, in our daily situations. Currently also you are using angles in your nearby vicinity where you are sitting, where you, like chair, the table you are using everywhere, right. Let us see the world map. In from the world map you can see that basically before starting the angle we need to know about certain directions and you know there are four major directions, north, east, west and south. That is the news right now how these directions are used to draw various angle or to compare various angles let's check it out see you can check like india it lies to the south of china is it to the south of china or is it to the south west of china that we have to check it out okay similarly we can here say that thailand lies to the south of myanmar Okay. We can also say Thailand lies to the south of China, Vietnam lies to the south of China, Sri Lanka lies to the south of India. These are few con conclusions that we can draw based on the directions. Can we make certain more conclusions? Yes. So, coming on to the point angles, before that directions. Now here, let us use the knowledge of this direction to learn a few more properties about angles. Now, let us use various direction senses to know about various angles. How can we use that? You all know that the directions if I use then uh, you can learn it with a plus sign, right? The one heading top will be the north direction. The one which heads down is the south direction. Towards east, that is toward the right you have east and towards the left you have the west direction. This you need to learn, right? And you can make a practical utility as well. Wherever you find a pole star, just face towards that side. That will be the north direction. Then obviously, towards your right hand side will be the east direction. Towards your left, you will have the west direction and towards your back side, you will have the south direction. So, once you know the direction senses, it becomes very easy. Now, always assume you are that place. Right. Let us take an example from a clock if I take, <coughs> then you need to know one thing here. Now see, if I take a line starting from north direction, in that case, now if I turn to right direction, okay, that is to east, 
from north that is from the upside if I turn to the right I am moving 90 degree okay or I say I move to the right angle so a right angle means from here you have moved and shifted in this direction to give you move towards east so from north you have moved to east that shows that you have turned one right angle similarly let's find out any other way out can we switch on to an <coughs> to a different one the turn from north to south let's find is it also right if I start from north direction and if I turn till south that means this direction am I getting some other am I coming to the right side let's see from north when I have started I have moved to first east starting from here <coughs> first I have moved till east that is 190 degree angle I have already covered okay and again from east I have moved to this direction that is a 90 degree angle so I can say I have moved two right angles 90 degree is what a right angle right right angle measures equal to 90 degree so when I have moved 190 degree from north to east and one more from east to south in all I have covered a straight angle which makes 180 degree how you are getting 180 degree that is 90 plus 90 so if you are facing towards north and you make a rotation of 180 degree you will head towards the direction south if you move to 90 degree or if you face just north and move to a right angle then in that case you will move towards east now you are facing towards east in this particular case okay I hope this point is very clear to everybody <coughs> let's see the next otherwise in this case also you can find many more directions in which we can move on like turning by two straight angles let's find out if I turn to two straight angles that means if I start from here now <coughs> I'm moving to one straight angle this way so I'm heading from north to south and now one more straight angle so I am again back to my original position right so moving from one place to a right and a right that is a straight angle see I have moved on to a direction south and from south again when I am moving a straight angle that is making a 180 degree I am reaching my original position that is north direction right I hope this point is very clear to you all okay let's now move on to the next thing turning by two straight angles let's see the conclusion from this first turning by two straight angle or we can say the two straight angles were also equal to four right angle right two straight angles or we can say four right angles you can see from this starting from here two straight angle one till here and one more till here or if I compare it with a right angle I can say here that first right angle second right angle then the third right angle and the fourth right angle so I conclude one thing that two straight angles are also four right angles but important thing here is in the same direction and it makes a full turn and that full turn is called as or a complete turn is called as one revolution okay very important we'll be using it frequently one revolution okay and the angle for one revolution is a complete angle right again the important word here is complete angle this is also a type of angle okay so can you tell me what is the measure of a complete angle now we will be finding various measures also let's see from 12 to 6 if I take the same example in a clock if the minute hand of a clock moves from 12 to 6 then it goes instead of a full revolution it takes how many how much of the revolution it just take half of a revolution right from 12 it will move to 6 so it goes 
half a revolution. Half a revolution means two right angles. Okay, because see here till here it is one right angle and one more right angle covering from three to six. So two right angles in all. Furthermore, from six to nine, if it moves <coughs> from six to nine, that shows see we mark it from here in this manner. right so if it moves from 6 to 9 it makes 1/4 of a revolution very simple because this is one revolution and one revolution is divided into four parts if i start from here till here this is the first part from here to 6 it is the second part if i move from here third part if 9 to 12 it makes the fourth part so there are 1 upon 4 of a revolution If I take from the number twelve to three, three to six, six to nine, and nine to twelve, you can also conclude that there are four right angles, right? See, one right angle, the second right angle, the third right angle, and the fourth right angle. So here you conclude one more thing that from six to nine, if you see, it's just a single one fourth of revolution. And how much right angle? How many right angles are here? so there is only one right angle which is made in 1/4 of a revolution right the next point from 1 to 10 it's not necessary that it will move from 12 to 3 3 to 6 6 to 9 it can move in between as as well so here we see from 10 to 1 it moves is it from 10 to 1 or is it from 1 to 10 it's from 1 to 10 this is a very important because if it goes from 10 to 1 the number of revolution will be different and if it moves from 1 to 10 the number of revolution will be a different one like from 1 if i if it if i mark it here 7 if this is 8 then 3 4 5 let's see it goes from 1 to 7 to give you a straight angle okay and then again three more numbers one fourth revolution means how many numbers it is covering as we have seen in the previous slide one fourth may it moves from 6 to 9 that means if it moves from 6 to 7 1 7 8 2 8 8 to 9 3 so if it is covering three hours then we say it moves one fourth of a revolution or if it covers three numbers it means it is making one fourth of the revolution so here we can also see from 1 to 10 One to seven, it is making one eighty or two right angles. One more right angle will be covered from seven to ten. So in all, we can compare here. It is making one, then it is making second, and it is making three right angles. So three fourth of a revolution will give you three right angles. I hope this part is clear to you all, right? To watch the complete video download the Abbind educational app from Play Store and App Store